Good evening. This is Doug Blakely. Um, I'm going to be your host for the evening, and uh, we appreciate the fact that you've joined us. Um, your video will be turned off this evening, and you will be muted throughout unless you raise your hand and want to ask a question by voice, in which case we will unmute you, but your camera will remain turned off. Uh, there are three different ways of uh, submitting questions uh, to the presenters. Uh, one is using the Q&A function. Uh, the second is raising your hand, as just mentioned, and the third is using the chat feature. Uh, we will try to answer all of the questions received during the workshop, but sometimes some of the questions require more complicated responses. Uh, all the questions will be answered in writing, and those written responses will be sent out to attendees along with uh, the link to the video recording uh, within a few days, a couple of weeks after the meeting is over. So uh, if I could ask Kelly to advance the slide, please. Uh, just to review, uh, the chat function is in the lower left of your screen. The Q&A button is at the lower right, and the raise your hand button is in the middle. Uh, one thing we do have the ability to do this evening, um, Eliana Batrez, who is my co-host for the evening, is fluent in Spanish. Uh, Eli, perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Eliana Batrez, and as Doug said, I'm one of the co-hosts tonight. Um, bienvenidos a todos a nuestro taller. Um, como Doug dijo, me llamo Eliana, um, y nomás quería compartir estos diferentes uh, botones con ustedes para que pueden preguntar cualquier pregunta durante nuestro taller. Entonces, eh, en el parte izquierda, en, en el botón izquierda, um, ustedes pueden utilizar el botón de chat si tiene alguna pregunta o algo um, que me quieres preguntar también. Entonces, si ustedes tienen cualquier pregunta en español, también la pueden poner ahí y mandármelo. Um, además, aquí en el, en el botón del derecho tenemos un, um, la capacidad de hacer uh, un Q&A. Entonces, um, si ustedes nos mandan sus preguntas, nosotros las podemos ver y las vamos a contestar. Um, y también en el botón del mitad, uh, del Sí, aquí. Um, si ustedes quieren um, hacer una pregunta, um, pues pueden levantar su mano y podemos um, y la podemos llamar. Muchas gracias. Y como dije, um, habrá um, diferentes maneras de hablar estas preguntas y habrá tiempo al final del taller también para preguntar preguntas. Excellent, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is the agenda for the evening. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, my name is Doug Blakely. I'm a program manager with Sustainable Contra Costa. Uh, we act as a facilitator for the County of Contra Costa and assisting to put these workshops together. Um, Eliana Batrez is my co-host this evening, and she will also be spending a few minutes uh, shortly talking about a program that has been sponsored through the Bay Area Air Quality Management District and also sponsored and supported through uh, Contra Costa County uh, called the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge. Uh, I'll be going over the Bay Ren uh, Home Plus program, uh, talking about uh, how it works and uh, giving you some ideas of how you can access it to improve the uh, energy efficiency uh, of your home. Uh, we have uh, Larry Waters from Electrify My Home uh, will be speaking and providing, uh, aside from an introduction to his company, also uh, reviewing a case study of a home in El Cerrito, uh, which has taken advantage of the Bayron program uh, to install uh, some new equipment. Uh, we have a contractor roundtable, and tonight there is a second uh, uh, contractor joining us. Curtis Weintier from Building Performance Professionals uh, will be introducing himself and his company. And then at that point, uh, we will be uh, opening it up for questions from 
the participants from the audience. Uh, and both Larry and Curtis uh, represent different types of specialties among the contractors who do Bayrin work. And uh, so I think you'll, you'll find that they can answer a lot of the questions that may come up. Uh, we'll have some final thoughts and some wrap up. Um, and uh, again, there is a uh, small survey at the end of the evening that we'd ask that you do uh, fill it out if you can. Uh, it helps us plan these things going forward so that they're help more helpful, uh, as helpful as they can be. So at this point, I'd like to turn this over to uh, Ellie um, and she can introduce the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge. Hello again, everyone. As Doug mentioned, my name is Eliana Bachez and I am Sustainable Contra Costa's virtual event facilitator. And today I would like to talk to you all about the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge. Uh, the goal of our challenge here is to make it simple, easy, and even fun for everyone in, Costa Con in Contra Costa to learn about the solutions that we have on climate and sustainability. We created this challenge where you can find actions that will not only have an impact on the climate, but to also save money, keep our air cleaner, improve our health, and create local jobs. A great aspect of this as well is that you can work together with others. It can be your friends, neighbors, other parents, faith community, etc., to take actions together in a group. And a little bit about Sustainable Contra Costa. Um, we are a nonprofit that was started in 2008 to educate and inspire people to live sustainably in order to have a clean and healthy community and planet. SCOGO has grown into a community of citizens, students, educators, and organizations working together for ecologically sustainable, economically vibrant, and socially just communities for all. So that's a little bit about us. And the people who make this uh, challenge possible, the sponsors who make this challenge possible are Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge, which is what we are, Sustainable Contra Costa, the city of Walnut Creek, the town of Moraga, the city of San Pablo, Antioch, Energy Upgrade California, and the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, in addition to the County of Contra Costa. So to get started on the challenge, you will visit cleanercontracosta.org. This is what the homepage looks like, and it's really easy to sign up. You can click join the challenge if you're new visiting our site, or sign up to create an account. But before we start that, I have a question for you all. What are the largest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions? What do you think based off of these pictures? So I'm gonna launch a poll for everyone and I'll give it about a minute or so. Please let me know which of these five options you think are the largest contributor to greenhouse gas. Thank you, I see some of you answering. We'll give it a few more seconds. All right, thank you everyone. So this is, this is the numbers, the percentage that uh, these different activities contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. Altogether, these five basic household activities, electricity use, home heating, transportation, food, and waste, make up 40% of the emissions that come from the United States. And for most cities, 40 to 70% or more of these basic emissions come from the residential sector. Don't be discouraged by this though, we have solutions to help you. Uh, we can help you save money, improve your health, create jobs, and work towards global sustainability and equity. But you might be wondering, how, how can I start? There are a lot of ways to be able to do this and starting may be a little daunting, but we have some things that we are familiar with, such as reduce, re <laughs> recycle, reduce, reuse, and recycle. 
Um, that might be a familiar way to start taking uh, your path on sustainability. And additionally, sustainable living might look like making and using clean renewable energy to heat our homes and businesses, power our transportation. We can also eat less red meat and practice sustainable agriculture, um, both by considering the food miles and uh, the effect of the carbon chain. Now, you may be thinking, okay, but what does that mean? These are some ways that you can start, and these are examples that we have from our challenge. Um, these are different categories um, that will kind of give you an idea of the different types of actions you can take. For example, we have some fr family friendly actions such as eat lower down the carbon chain, wash clothes wisely, and reduce and reuse. So two of those three were already mentioned on the last slide. So as you can see, these all correlate to each other. Um, at the beginning of the challenge, each household has a goal of reducing 5,000 pounds of CO2 in the first six months. And it is possible to make a big difference, even with a few actions. So here's an example of a family and how they reached 5,000 pounds um, of reduced CO2. So this is a Jimenez family example. Um, one thing they did to save money was lowering their thermostat. So lowering the thermostat, setting three degrees in the winter. So in the winter, a good um, temperature to have your house is 68 degrees. And in the summer, having your temperature between 75 and 78 will help you save money, fun fact. Um, you can eat plant-based meals by trying to replace one um, red, meat wheel, red meat meal a week with a plant-based meal. Um, you can do things like combining trips when you have errands to run. Um, try and make sure that you do them all on the same day and take the most um, effective route. And you can also take bigger actions like choosing 100% green electricity. And those are some things that we'll hear about later from our contractors as well. So when you sign up for the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge, we will ask you to complete your energy profile. Here it asks you different questions to kind of gauge your energy use, such as uh, what kind of stove top do you have? Um, how often do you use it? and questions about other household appliances. Once you've completed it and filled it out, you will be able to see your starting impact. So about how much um, CO2 your household produces. Um, and this will give you an idea of places and areas where you can reduce um, or introduce more sustainable actions in those categories. And speaking of which, we have over 80 actions on the platform. So it's really great, a really great opportunity for you to find actions that are right for your household. So during the pandemic, a lot of us were hanging out at home. This is a great um, category that gets you started on finding good actions that you may already be taking in your home as well. Um, we have youth friendly actions and then we have um, different categories so that you can reduce the usage of different resources around your house. Um, every household is different though. So this is a really great way to find actions that are right for you. Um, additionally, you can search or on the next tab, you can have recommended actions, um, which the platform will want to share with you. Um, this is what it looks like when you, um, open one of the resources. This one is switching to LEDs. And since you fill out your energy profile, you can get a really um, a really close estimate of what your, animal, your annual savings might look like um, and the impact that this is having on your household, which is really cool. These resource pages also include information and how-to guides. So if you, maybe you're not sure where to start or uh, what factors might be helpful in this action. This is a great place to be able to see these. And at the bottom of each of these actions, you have a custom resource page. So when you sign up for the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge, 
um, the platform will ask you where you're located and then it will give you actions that are tailored to where you live. So these are really cool custom resources that are really helpful and it includes um, resources around the county and also um, in, your, in your area. As you can see here, one of the awesome rebate slash credit resources we have here is the Bayron Home Plus. So thank you for joining us today at this workshop. And like I mentioned earlier, you can use the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge to participate with other people in your community. So you can be in a community group and we also have teams. So you can go ahead and join a community group, whether it be with people from your school or your neighborhood. And then from there, you can form teams. So if you, for example, had a community group that was in your neighborhood, each household could make a different team. And that would be a great way for you to have your own individualized uh, challenge with people that you know um, and work with. Right now, Contra Costa County is doing great on our progress as a county. Here you can see how many households are participating, how much carbon we've reduced and how much money we've saved. And right below, there's also a leaderboard. So you can get your team on there and take some actions and see how your team shows up on the leaderboard. Right now, our leaders in with the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge are Camp Lindo High School and the Jackman Living Earth class team, um, also from Camp Lindo. So that's a really great way to be able to see how everyone's doing collectively. Additionally, a program that we work on here in Sustainable Contra Costa, especially this summer, is Energy Upgrade California. Energy Upgrade California is a statewide initiative that wants to give people resources on how to lower their energy bills and conserve electricity, especially during the summer um, when it's very hot and everyone wants to turn on their fans and air conditioners uh, for, good, for good reason. Um, and it's a great way to be able to also learn small actions that you can take around your house that will hopefully help you um, reduce, reduce your energy bills. Um, similar to Gray Run, they also provide rebates that will help you um, complete some of these projects. And Bay Run is also a partner of Energy Upgrade California. Um, so if you want some more information on that, please visit us at Energy Upgrade, or you can visit energyupgradecalifornia.org or you can visit sustainablecoco.org slash energy. Thank you very much, everyone. And I would like to take this opportunity to ask if anybody has any questions. If you've got a question, oh, great, okay. If you've got a question, you can either submit it into the Q&A feature or raise your hand. So I have a question from Gladys, go ahead. You're unmuted, correct? Yes. Sorry about you that. I, I said, Thank can you. you repeat the URL or the web address where we sign up for the information you just shared? Yes, I will go ahead and put that in the chat for anyone who would also like to see it. Thank okay. you for your question. Um, are there any other questions about the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge or Energy Upgrade California? Um, Bo, go ahead. If I have a definite project in mind already, how is that going to work out? Uh, let me take that um, one. Um, I'm going to be uh, introducing the Bayren program in a few minutes, in a couple of minutes here, and uh, we'll go through some of the details of that. So basically the remainder of this evening is how Bayren works, what it can do for you, um, what the process is. So uh, you'll have an opportunity actually to uh, ask specific questions about that uh, a little bit later on in the evening. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, and we have time for one more question if anybody has one. Awesome, well, thank you everyone. And we will also have an opportunity 
for a question and answer segment at the end of this program. And now I'm gonna pass the mic back to my colleague, Doug, so he can talk to you about Bayrun. Great, thank you, Ellie, uh, really appreciate it. And uh, actually one of the things is that some of what uh, Ellie presented in terms of actions and things that you can do to uh, reduce your carbon footprint, reduce your energy use, save money, uh, are things that Bayran is here to help you with as well. Uh, if we could go to the next slide. Um, I get quite a few phone calls anytime we get ready to have one of these workshops. And a lot of folks are trying to understand just exactly what Bayran is and how it fits into the overall picture. Uh, the simple answer is that uh, in our uh, bills to PG&E, whoever our uh, utility is, uh, there is in fact a portion of the rate base, uh, which is a conservation, conservation fee. That money is being collected and then is being uh, reused or sent back into the communities uh, to conserve and reduce energy use. And there's a whole variety of programs. Uh, EUC, Energy Upgrade California, is one of the programs that is part of getting the information out. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the Bay Run program is the nine Bay Area counties working together. And we have a number of different programs that actually are offering rebates to homeowners, businesses, multifamily homeowners, and so on. Um, in ways to, if you think about uh, most of our homes, they tend to be uh, fairly old, uh, older than the last decade. And as a result, probably are not as energy efficient as the new homes are. And so the idea is to offer money to the homeowners as an incentive for them to take steps that will improve energy efficiency. And uh, there's quite a variety of those actions that uh, we'll be talking about. But in this particular case, the nine counties around the Bay Area have come together so that whether you are in Sonoma County or Santa Clara, uh, the actions that you can take and the rebates that you would qualify for are the same in any one of those locations. Next slide. And it's very hard to see on this slide, or at least it is for me, uh, but uh, the idea is that uh, Bay Ram kind of comes together at the nexus between a whole variety of different actions and different activities, which are supporting businesses, supporting homeowners, um, even uh, they're coming up with programs for renters. Um, so there's a wide variety of different things that they're coordinating or supporting or implementing or providing, uh, all with the idea uh, to help uh, residents in these communities uh, to reduce energy use. And in many cases also, improve uh, the comfort and livability of their homes. Next slide. So this just uh, kind of sets out uh, in larger type some of the things which are on the previous one. Uh, we have residential uh, activities that are supported through Bay Ren. Uh, in this particular case, the Home Plus program is targeted on single family homes. Uh, you can see that there's Bambi, which is multifamily dwellings. There's also a commercial. Uh, for businesses and so on and so forth. Uh, financing is uh, provided through this. So there's quite a wide variety of different things. Next slide, please. Uh, when you think of homes in general, and um, any home, it turns out, uh, probably is less energy efficient than it could be. But especially since we have, uh, so many of us are living in homes that were built uh, 10, 20, 50, even 100 years ago or more, uh, there's a whole variety of different things which are fairly common. Uh, so you might have problems with moisture in the attic or the crawl space, uh, certainly drafty rooms uh, because of unsealed cracks and, and various other problems. Uh, your heating and cooling system may be very inefficient uh, in not distributing the heat or uh, the air conditioning effectively or evenly to the various living spaces uh, and other, other items that you can see on the list there. So each of you probably know the sorts of shortcomings of your own particular home. Bayran can help with some of those. Uh, next slide, please.
So uh, one of the things that comes with uh, some of these older homes in a variety of ways is uh, indoor air quality issues. And uh, while it's not directly related to energy efficiency, it is related to quality of uh, living and comfort in terms of living inside these spaces. So uh, it is again, one of the things that we like to look at in terms of the actions that can be taken that Bayron will support and provide rebates for uh, to, to improve the, uh, the comfort of your home. Next slide. Uh, there are steps that uh, can be taken uh, that will test your indoor air quality and also uh, the degree to which you may have a leaky house and um, uh, that you've got outside air or air coming in from the attic and so on. And I know that our contractors tonight would be quite happy to talk about some of those, um, some of those techniques and, uh, that they can uh, implement to help you understand what's going on in your house. Next slide. Uh, air leakage, I've uh, just mentioned that. Again, uh, windows, doors, uh, probably you've got air leaking into the uh, attic spaces, uh, perhaps into the crawl spaces, depending upon how your home is built. All of those essentially represent uh, lost heating or cooling. Uh, you've paid to heat that air or cool that air. And if it's not going into the rooms in which you intend it to go into, then of course you're paying for something that uh, as he used to say, is heating the great outdoors. Um, in some cases also, you can have uh, leakage of air coming in from the attic spaces and various other things that may have other sorts of contaminants in it, which are problematic as well. Next slide, please. Uh, just an idea of some of the things uh, our contractors tonight would uh, be quite happy to talk about these particular issues in detail. If your home is more, again, than about 10 years old, um, and the Bayron program, in fact, uh, can be used by any homeowner whose home is older than 2016. So uh, over time, your insulation does go bad. And over time, there's also been uh, increases in uh, the code for standards of the amount of insulation that they want in homes. And Bayron can help you take advantage of that as well. Next slide. Uh, one of the items which is coming along nowadays uh, is the idea of switching away from gas, natural gas as a cooking uh, method. Uh, and there's two reasons for that. First one is that it puts uh, carbon into the air. We need to reduce the carbon that we're putting in the air. Uh, the second is that uh, if you think about it, you've got combustion process, uh, you know, products in your house as a result of burning natural gas. And so the idea is uh, to switch over to electric cooktops, specifically in this case, uh, induction cooktops. Um, the idea of electrification is that we can get the electricity from renewable sources, which are carbon free, solar, um, wind turbines and various other methods uh, that reduces our carbon footprint. And at the same time, in, partic uh, in the case of cooking, also improves indoor air quality because you're getting rid of uh, the combustion products. Next slide, please. Uh, and this, uh, talking about induction cooktops, uh, also some of the equipment, uh, particularly Larry uh, Waters this evening, will be talking about uh, electrification of the home, uh, water heaters, electrification there, also heating and cooling systems, uh, dryers, it uh, can also be switched over to electric. Uh, in the case, particularly uh, Bayren offers rebates if you have a gas dryer at this point and switch over to uh, what's called a uh, heat pump, uh, gas, uh, heat pump uh, closed dryer system. Next slide. So where do you start? And the question uh, is first, uh, well, what is it that you want to do? But uh, if you're looking for more information, the site to go to is uh, bayrenresidential.org. And you'll find that there's a great uh, deal of information there that you can use. But one of the things that you need when you decide that there's a project that you want to take on is that you have to find a Bayren qualified or a Bayren approved contractor. And that list of contractors is available uh, under the tab that says find a contractor. 
There's about 45 of them or so that are spread across the Bay Area. And uh, you can search them by geography, you can search them by specialty so that there's plumbers and insulation specialists and uh, HVAC people and so on and so forth. Uh, there's, you can also search by uh, language. So there's a number of different ways that you can find the contractor. Uh, we'll go into it in a little bit more detail, but on that site, you can also find what's called the list of measures, which is the exact list of items and the amount of rebate which is available for each action that you take. In sum, at the moment, uh, to get a little ahead of ourselves, Bayran is currently offering a total of $5,000 per home, per dwelling, uh, to take a variety of actions, but it's made up of a number of smaller things. For example, putting in insulation earns you one rebate, putting in the gas or the uh, um, heat pump dryer earns you a different rebate, and these can be additive. You can, in fact, do them over a number of different years uh, to the total of 5,000. It doesn't all have to be done at once. Next slide, please. Uh, there's other things available in there um, in the fact that uh, you can also uh, um, get home evaluation services and kits and so on so that you can determine the extent to which you've got issues in your home that needs to be uh, dealt with. Uh, there is, in fact, a group on there. Uh, the Energy Advisor is a group that uh, provides a great deal of technical assistance. I get the phone calls from the people trying to understand what Bayran is. Uh, I can give you general advice, but when you get down to deciding, say, between two different bids uh, to put in different uh, HVAC units or something like that, uh, the Energy Advisor can help, uh, help you determine which one is the best one for you. Next slide. So these are the list of measures, and I won't go through them in detail, but you can see that they're, they're quite detailed. And notice that the very first one on here is to uh, install a, a smart thermostat. Many of you may be familiar with Nest uh, thermostats, but Honeywell and all the other manufacturers have various versions of these. And these are ones that are basically connected uh, to the internet and uh, offer you various ways to talk to it through Alexi and Lexus and uh, a home Google, or Google Home and so on and so forth. So uh, basically they are more effective in offering more granular control of your home environment. Other things, duct sealing, and this includes the duct, uh, duct work on your existing uh, HVAC system uh, or duct replacement. Again, uh, ducts tend to leak over time and sometimes it's just cheaper to replace it uh, upgrade it to, to new as opposed to repairing the stuff that's in there. Building shell uh, includes attic insulation and wall insulation, in which case there they pay by the square foot. And uh, in the case of attics, uh, you need to go to R44, which is over code, uh, but that's in addition to whatever you have there. So if you're already at R30, for example, uh, you would have to add 14 more R ratings to be able to get up to R44 to qualify for a rebate in this particular case. Walls can be insulated, uh, two by four framing, which is the older homes. Uh, you can get up to R13. Uh, you can go to R19 and the newer homes that are two by six framing. Uh, next slide, please. And I won't go into all of this other than to say that uh, if you replace a gas water heater with a more efficient newer gas water heater, uh, you get uh, a rebate of $400. Uh, if you go over to a heat pump system, uh, you can get $1,000. And one of the questions that will come up before we're done this evening is, um, you know, how, how much of the cost of these things uh, do the rebates cover? And these are rebates. They do not cover 100% of the cost and it depends upon what you're doing and uh, how extensive the work is and so on and so forth. But uh, think of it as an incentive uh, to encourage you to take these actions. And at the same time, uh, you get this money back, but you'll also save money on your energy bills going forward. Next slide, please. So heating and cooling, uh, again, kind of the same thing. Uh, you get a rebate on, a, on replacing a uh, old gas furnace with a newer, more high efficient gas furnace. 
uh, but uh, the rebates to go over to heat pump systems, which are much more efficient, uh, those are higher. And again, uh, the idea in part is to incentivize us to go over to all electric. Next slide. And here's a couple more. The induction cooktop will get you uh, $300 and the heat pump clothes dryer replacing a gas uh, clothes dryer, $300. Next slide. And uh, they've got some bonus measures. If you take multiple actions together, you qualify for some additional um, rebates in this particular case. Next slide. So participating contractors, as I mentioned, you do have to work through a, a contractor who's approved by Bayren. Uh, these are contractors who are out in your neighborhoods already. Uh, most of them have been in business for decades. Uh, but in this particular case, they go through a, another approval process uh, to become approved by Bayren. And there are several aspects of the work uh, that ties in with this. For example, they are the ones who verify that an approved action has been taken, such as upgrading the furnace or what have you. And second then, uh, they will calculate the size of the rebate that you are entitled to, and most of them will submit the paperwork to the county so that the uh, rebate check can be issued. Next slide. And uh, choosing a contractor, uh, like anything else, if you uh, were getting your uh, house painted, you might get two or three bids from different painters. Uh, same thing here, you might choose to approach different contractors. This is where the energy advisor can come in and helping you decide if uh, one contractor uh, proposes to install a train air conditioning unit and uh, another contractor wants to put in a carrier unit. Um, you know, um, the energy advisor can help you, help you sort through the technical details of that. And um, the idea with Bayran is to offer very targeted, uh, very high return rebates for actions. Uh, on the other hand, for those who wanna put in, uh, replace all the windows with double pane, put in solar panels, Bayran uh, doesn't handle those things. Uh, but there are other programs, for example, PACE is mentioned here, REAL is mentioned here, those are uh, acronyms. Um, there are others. Uh, and if you go online and put in the acronym plus the word energy, you will get uh, information. These are primarily financing programs that offer preferred rates. And in many cases, in addition to covering the full cost of say the solar panels or what have you, uh, you can also uh, do other work such as put in a new kitchen. Or, or something that can be included in what they will finance. Next slide. Thank you. Um, yeah, more information. Uh, check the site out for some of what's available there. Um, and uh, check the website, uh, bayranresidential.org on the right side. And again, where do I start? That's a good place to start. And there's the energy, uh, home energy advisor, uh, both a telephone number and an email address, there is a pop-up on the website that provides the same information. Next slide. Home energy score is just a uh, method by which you can rate the energy efficiency of your home. And there are tools there to help you do that as well. And notice that there's an assessment rebate of $200 towards the cost of doing it if a contractor does it. Next slide. Um, now we will be taking some questions uh, before uh, we turn it over to our first contractor. Well, actually, um, Ellie, I would like to uh, actually move on. And so uh, in this case, I'd like to introduce Larry Waters, who is the principal at Electrify My Home. Uh, Larry. Uh, is he there? Hello, there how are you guys doing? Let me get started here. Thank you for having me again, Doug. I appreciate it. Everybody see and hear me okay? Uh, maybe a little more volume. Is that better? Yes. All right, fantastic. All right, I'm Larry Waters. My company name is uh, Electrify My Home, and um, we are a 100% 
Uh, we are a company that's 100% dedicated to electrification projects. The, uh, we've been in business for a few years. I've been in the trade for about almost 40 years. I know you can't tell by looking at me. I look like a 20 year guy. Uh, you can show the next slide. Why, why use Electrify My Home? <clears throat> we have 35 years of HVAC experience in our company, all in me. Uh, we've done hundreds of electric system designs and all over the Bay Area. I'm an advisory board member for the Building Decarbonization Coalition. And um, I'm the first company really that's dedicated to only electrification. So that's super different. Uh, we give you a 100% comfort guarantee. And since we are a elite dealer and a diamond certified dealer with our brands, we can offer you a 12 year warranty on the equipment we install. We generally only install electrical heat pump systems for either hot water or your uh, comfort system in your home. We do it using uh, load calculations, but how we work is we uh, start the process using a virtual assessment process. You just answer a few questions on my website, sends me a report. We do a little bit of research. We schedule a call and we can, we can share with you your budget range numbers before you ever have to have anybody creeping around in your house, which is nice. We do a complete energy assessment. Once you want to move forward, we measure and quote, give you the final price. 98% of the time it matches the original quote. And we approve and schedule, we get you on the board and we install. Next slide, please. Gas versus electric. Uh, we. This is a big deal right now in California because of our, our very, um, our very forward thinking um, energy goals and clean air goals in California. We have to reduce carbon emissions by 40% by 2030. And we were talking about this back in, you know, 2015, 2017, when it was 10, 12, 15 years. But now we're really getting to the end of 2021. We're going into 2022. And uh, we, we really got to get started on this. So electric systems are available today that we can heat and cool your home, the average home, using about the same amount as energy as a uh, hairdryer in a lot of cases. And that, that's a mind blower. Um, electrification is the only way that you can offset your costs with renewable energy. You'll never be able to get a solar panel to replace a gas bill. The gas systems are inherently dangerous and dirty. That's why you hear HVAC companies offering safety checks all the time. You don't have to safety check a heat pump system because there's no possibility of carbon monoxide or any of those other issues. And, uh, you know, the electric systems are just way more comfortable, right? So they keep your house at a more, more even temperature. They run more continuously. So they're excellent at cleaning the air in the house. They're super economical to operate. And once I said, you can offset the entire cost of the system with uh, just a few solar panels. So it's a nice way to really get a grip on your costs and your comfort. Next slide, please. This is a case study, a customer of mine. Um, she is a really nice lady. Uh, she works at City of Berkeley. She's a sustainability outreach specialist. Um, she is also, I met her at the Berkeley Electrification Group. And um, she was on a real goal to completely decarbonize her home and she's been successful at it. They've gotten to the point where they are 100% off gas and they actually had the utility company come out and remove their gas meter, which is pretty awesome. And uh, she had some pretty dangerous combustion appliances in her house that we figured out as we were going on this. Next slide, please. The property was built in 48. Uh, before I got there, there was already some attic air sealing done and some R44 insulation in the attic. I went out there, this is a very small home. Um, it's, I think 1200 square feet. And it had a 60,000 BTU furnace. And from a home performance perspective, a 60,000 BTU furnace is really big enough for a 2000 square foot home. Uh, they had a 40 gallon gas tank water heater in the, what she now uses as the pantry. 
uh, we were able to move the water heater outside into the garage with a new heat pump system. And when we pulled out the old water heater, we found some real concerns. So it had been backdrafting for quite a while. She was getting uh, the products of combustion pulled right into the house. Uh, that was going on for some time. She didn't use her furnace before this for a number of years because the ductwork was contaminated. So she was using plug-in wall heaters to heat the house. And her new heat pump system cost a lot less to operate than just the plug-in wall heaters. She wasn't comfortable. And she was looking for the best system for solar offset. And that's really what we provide, custom design systems for a solar offset. Next slide, please. We reduced her system capacity by two thirds from a 60,000 BTU furnace to an 18,000 BTU heat pump system. We did this with load calculations. So knowing that we could do this, we have a very, we have a very hospitable climate for this type of operation in the Bay Area. And customers are always surprised at how oversized their systems are. We do a load calc that will determine the room by room airflow that gives you better comfort we installed a ducted mini split system located in the crawl space. It was a 20.2 system, SEER system, a fully modulating inverter heat pump system. Installed all new properly sized ductwork. Existing floor ducts were adapted to the new system. So in her house, we didn't have to cut any new holes, which was very convenient. And we installed a huge return air. So the intake on this system uh, we about doubled its size. So we went from a system that was three times larger and we went to a return air that was two times larger. So it makes the system incredibly quiet. That's one of the things uh, that we're kind of known for. Uh, she got a $1,950 combined Bayrin rebate. And uh, here is a video of her explaining this upgrade. Go ahead and roll it. But it was quick. You guys yeah. were, did this and the and the furnace within you know within the week. Thank you. And and uh, how, how what's your what's your feeling so far about everything? It has been great. So the hardest thing you know is well maybe it wasn't even that hard. So we figured out how to deal with the Wi-Fi, and um, the neat thing is we actually turn it off during the peak hours. Oh, so nice. it's not it's not running then, and we still have plenty of hot water. And we've got there we got four of us in the house, so I have two teenage boys who like to take long showers. Right. And we you know we were a little nervous, like if we turn it off, plenty of hot water. So it um, obviously it's on right now, and we we pump it up. But yeah. we, we played the nice thing with that um, you can use that Wi-Fi to set it up the schedule. Uh -huh. Is we just played with it. We were kind of curious, like if we heat later in the day, you know. Maybe it will use less energy because right. it's warmer. Who knows what? But the cool thing is, we have not seen a spike in our in our energy bills at all. Oh, that's amazing! So, that's yeah. amazing. And so, what we're doing here is we have the tank set for 140 degrees, and that's what's giving you that extra capacity, right? So, with the tank at 140, and right down here is a mixing valve, and we're mixing that back down to. Have you had to adjust that at all? Yeah, it was. It was. Um, too warm for the family, too oh, hot. Okay. So we just we've been playing with it, you know, incrementally. Okay. But um, it's been. I mean, we have never run out of water, even though. So it's on 140. Uh -huh. but this will turn off. We have it scheduled. The peak pricing comes in, stops. Beautiful, and we beautiful. We go all day without it coming on again. You know? Beautiful. So, so just for anybody that's watching, how these work is the mixing valve is taking the hot water from the tank and mixing it with cold water off of this T. And so when we have the tank at 140, and you have this probably adjusted to 120, 115, it really extends the amount of water you have. So if the power was to fail, you could go a long time just on this really hot water that's in this tank. So that, that's, that's a nice little feature. They did a nice job on this. I should say we did a nice job on this. But can we take a peek at the outdoor unit? Sure, you bet. So Rebecca, this is the beautiful heat pump system we installed for you. What, what is your impression of this after owning it for a while? Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> so it is, first of all, so quiet. You don't even know it goes on. I mean, we don't hear anything. And we don't hear, you know, when inside the house, like with the air exchange, nothing. And it used to be with our gas one, oh man, you heard that thing. I mean, the whole house felt like, <laughs> you know, like it's an airplane taken off or something like that. Um, and I love too that the, 
we get air circulating all the time. I used to come into my house after I'd been away for a few, and it, it, it would have a staleness, you know? It would smell. Yeah. And now I just, it, I never smell that anymore. And, right, um, right. And then the fun thing is we tested the AC. I mean, it was, we had a little bit of hot, you know, warm day once, and we said, let's just try it out. And it worked. Okay. Oh, is that awesome? Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, fearing the um, fire season as much as I have in the past. Yeah, and then um, then we also installed a filter under the under the house in the system. So when you're running the system, it's constantly cleaning the air as well. So that'll that'll be great for closing the windows during those those smoke events. And um, I don't know, you could tell it's running right now. Yeah. I mean, you can see the plant moving a little bit, but it's also a little wind out here. But it's inaudible, and I just heard it speed up a little bit. This is closer to its highest speed. Yeah, I put it on the I jacked it up to the highest. Um, yeah, we don't usually need that but I just right. did it just just so that you could maybe hear something when you try to yeah it's it, it, it's beautiful it looks good so so you're on a full decarbonization mission and I heard that you fully got there we did so just last week we um, PG&E took out our um, the gas service and and took out our meter and um, our meter used to be you'll, you'll catch it over there it used to be right there and it's gone that's um, that's absolutely amazing so the the entire meter is gone. You're no longer dependent on natural gas whatsoever. All electric, right? Yep. And you, all right. So so overall, your your whole experience with um, with with electrify my home has been um, fantastic. I mean, you guys, one, you were able to do the job quickly when I needed it. Um, the Zayren rebates that I got, that was all handled through your office. Um, those came through and that was really nice to get that rebate check nice. so we've been kind of counting on that as right. part of the project and we're going to apply that towards you the know, next thing the next the next piece um but it, it, it's yeah been great working with you awesome thank you so much and, and thank you again and uh thank you again for what you're doing for the environment and the movement it's really it's really important and i'm really proud to work with folks like yourself well it's been great to work with you larry and i'm so glad that you are helping to um educate other you know, contractors and installers about this work. Well, that was certainly nice of her. She's a wonderful person. Oh, uh, there we are. Okay, so we're back. So uh, Larry, any final wrap up uh, comments? And just for everybody's uh, Information, Larry will be back in a couple of minutes to answer questions uh, during the contractor roundtable. Yeah, just one one final thought. She she uh, was able to remove her entire gas meter. A lot of my customers aren't kind of on that far of a path, and it's not required for you to do that, to make the first step and go with a heat pump to replace your existing HVAC system or a heat pump to replace your existing water heater. Both of those systems are highly affordable when you compare them to any other type of HVAC or, or water heater. There's good sized rebates coming through. And one of the things she was able to do is after she got rid of her gas meter, she was able to uh, upgrade her electrical panel in the same spot that it was at without having to move it anywhere because she wasn't able to do that before because her gas meter was in the way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd, I'd like to introduce uh, Curtis Weintier, who is with Building Performance Professionals. And uh, there you are. Hello, Curtis. Good to see you. Go ahead, Curtis. In the meantime, we have a few questions. So we'll let Curtis go ahead and handle his audio, no worries, Zoom, am I right? Um, so we have two questions in the chat right now. The first one is, are there ever benefits to adding skylights or solar lights? Um, Ellie, if you could unmute uh, Laura, uh, that question's confusing me ever so slightly, so. All right. Um. Uh, Laura, when you're talking about benefits in this case, uh, is it a situation where you're talking about rebate benefits, uh, monetary benefits, or something else? You're muted. 
Sorry. We're there all having be, trouble with it tonight. I know. There used to be rebates given for skylights. And I think those solar lights, I know a lot of people were on a discussion thread I was looking at talking about the greatness of those because they don't use any electricity or they don't, yeah, they don't use any electricity. So I didn't know if that was something that people still do, if there's ever any rebates on that or if these contractors do that. Um, yeah, I think in one of our previous conversations, there used to be a, a re not a rebate, but a credit on your federal taxes for the solar skylights. Larry, I don't know if that one survived the most recent changes in the tax law or not, uh, or if there's anything else available of that type. I haven't heard of anything in the last few years that has to do with um, the skylights or the solar tubes or anything at all. As far as the programs we, we work in, there's, there's nothing that I know of. The most recent skylight I put in was 2018. It was solar powered. So, uh, you know, basically it opens and closes off of solar panels. But um, there was definitely still a federal credit for that one at that time. But, uh, you know, the tax law changes last year may have completely altered things. But okay. Thanks. other than that, sounds like not much. Curtis, are you back? We still can't hear you. Uh, um, Curtis, if you have wired headphones, that might help. Okay, and the next question um, is... Aha. Um, yes. How much was the rebate that um, the customer in the case study received? Okay, that was uh, uh, $1,950. And it was made up of three different uh, discrete activities, uh, including $1,000 uh, for the um, heat pump water heater, $800 for the ducting, replacement of the ducting, and $150 uh, Larry, I think that was related to, uh, that was a bonus measure, if I recall. Yeah, that was the bonus measure to help cover the cost of the uh, energy assessment. And she was unique, though. There's a lot more categories in that rebate program that we can use. We put her system under the house, so we, when we insulate an attic space, she already had that done. That would have been a rebatable item. And then if she had already had air conditioning before that, she would have gotten an additional thousand dollars. And right now those rebates on those water heaters have gone way up. In fact, they just announced another thousand dollar stacking rebate on those today. Wow, okay. Uh, one thing to mention, um, and uh, we can probably get into the technicalities of heat pumps here in a couple of minutes, but uh, a lot of homes in the Bay Area, area are not equipped with uh, air conditioners. They've got furnaces, uh, but not necessarily an air conditioner. Um, if you have a combined system at this point and you put in um, replacement units, uh, then you can get uh, rebates for both the furnace and for the air conditioner. But in the case of uh, Rebecca, she was only able to get the uh, she wasn't able to get anything for the furnace uh, because uh, the unit actually, uh, the heat pump functions as both a furnace and an air conditioning unit. And so uh, you, she got both functions from a single unit, but it didn't qualify for a rebate because uh, she had not previously had air conditioning there. So Curtis, are you back? No, we're not. Seems like some is something on your mic. Are you muted on your computer mic? Okay. Anyway. Okay. Uh, we had uh, one other site about being able to do home assessments in the Spanish. And the answer to that is yes. Uh, you can, uh, when you look for a contractor, uh, you can find one who uh, uh, speaks Spanish and uh, certainly work with them to be able to uh, get the assessments and the work done. Uh, and other languages, if you take a look at the site, there's quite a selection of other languages available um, for people uh, for whom English is, is definitely not their uh, preferred language. 
Okay, Curtis. Not there. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess what I would like to do is uh, move on and uh, see if we can. Um, Curtis, one thing that you might do is call in. I think there's a telephone number on the link. Call in and we'll uh, use, um, use your phone for the mic. So go ahead and do that. Meanwhile, I'd like to open it up and uh, just start at this point with uh, the contractor roundtable is an opportunity for homeowners to be able to ask additional questions such as the ones that we've been answering here for the past few minutes. Um, and uh, uh, there's a question here from uh, Botep, uh, would a window AC or a portable AC with gas heating qualify? And the answer is no. Uh, even on the heating units and so on and so forth, these have got to be what amount to central air uh, installed capacity. Now in the case of heaters, some of the older homes have wall units uh, as opposed to a ducted uh, central system or something like that. Uh, you can replace uh, a wall unit uh, with one of the uh, new technologies, but you you can't use, you, you, you don't qualify for rebates if you're talking about anything that's portable or is not actually attached to the house. Hey guys, can you hear me now? Uh, now we can hear you. Awesome. Great. Well, I logged in uh, without my video, so uh, maybe earlier you got to see what I look like. Now you can hear me. So that's fantastic. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm uh, Curtis Wines here with Building Performance Professionals. Uh, I've been asked tonight to uh, table uh, here with Larry Waters about um, energy upgrades, uh, some of the services we provide, and also uh, to answer questions uh, that you guys might have. Uh, just a little bit of background about building performance professionals. Uh, we've built a solid reputation for top-notch construction, heating and cooling, and home performance. Uh, we're general contractors, uh, heating and air conditioning contractors, and also insulation contractors. Uh, beginning with a roof to crawl space, um, home visual inspection, BPP can provide the information to help you prioritize efficiency and air quality improvements to your home. Our top concern is your client, our client's comfort. Uh, next slide, please. So just as we've learned earlier tonight, uh, there's some elements that we really prioritize in um, the home and, and look at where uh, we can make improvements, uh, looking where heat flow in or out of the home is, indoor air quality is a big issue here in California and other states as well. But uh, with our fires, we're really focusing on uh, the um, areas for contamination, uh, airflow and uh, flow and moisture control as well, along with a lot of er other testing with the whole house energy assessment. Next slide, please. Uh, details are in the data. Uh, home energy audits highlight your home's trouble spots. So just like when we need to get uh, anything uh, looked at or taken care of, we really need to come up with a diagnosis the same is true with our home. We need this data to let us know where to get to work. Uh, we design and commission our systems using ACA manual J and D, uh, ensuring perfect fit by sizing equipment to your home specific loads and calculations. Uh, we don't wanna just uh, start by just changing your heat and air conditioning system. We wanna look at it as a, ho a whole, and we wanna try to uh, make sure that we size it properly unlike your traditional um, HVAC contractors. Uh, you do have options, and uh, the team at, um, at Bay Wren is great about uh, answering questions that you might have, uh, and they have energy advisors to um, kind of guide you through some of uh, what some of the contractors are, are suggesting in our homes. Um, so with a team approach, uh, together everyone achieves more. The energy teams of BPP performs every upgrade using the uh, strict standard requirements of a BPI Gold Star contractor, including careful testing and balancing of your new insulation to keep your comfort comfortable and your in your energy journey. Um, we also provide great warranties with our equipment, and we also uh, uh, have a um, 
the first one's free where we come back in six months so that uh, we can make sure that your home is um, operating properly, your systems are operating properly, and also uh, make any adjustments that may need to be made. Next slide, please. Uh, so some of the services that we that we provide is uh, energy assessments, heat pump mini split systems, uh, energy efficient furnaces, uh, energy efficient um, home air conditioners, insulation, air sealing, whole house fans. If the home is uh, insulated and air sealed, it's a very important part to whole house fans. This is also an, uh, an alternative to just adding air conditioning. Um, heat pump water heaters, much like we saw in the video, and whole house electrification. If you have knob and tube or older um, electrical panels in-house, all of these services can be provided by BPP, uh, rewiring the house or uh, adding a 200 amp panel. Um, doors and windows also play a small role when it comes to energy efficiency, so we add that in there. And then after we've already uh, kind of built a really efficient system, then we can look at how we power that system um, with solar and backup battery or battery walls. Next slide, please. So this is our contact information. Uh, I'm excited to have you guys um, ask some questions from us and uh, we can help provide information along your energy upgrade uh, journey. At this, point, uh, at this point, I'd like to open up. Thank you very much, uh, Curtis. Uh, glad that we were finally able to uh, get you joined in here. Awesome. Uh, but, uh, I'd like to uh, encourage uh, the audience, the participants this evening, uh, to ask questions that may be related to your specific uh, uh, needs for your house or anything that uh, we haven't made uh, clear enough yet this evening. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to submit uh, questions in writing uh, through the chat or the Q&A function or raise your hand and we'll be able to uh, answer the questions live. Uh, there was a question, uh, somebody asked if there were uh, income uh, requirements with regard to the Bay Ren program and the answer is no. Um, bottom line is that uh, the program is open to anybody whose homes and the retrofits that they do to the home uh, fit within the qualifications and the specifications as set out in the uh, list of measures. And so there are specifications with regard to uh, the level of efficiency of a furnace unit or a water heater, uh, various other things. For example, I talked about the uh, going to R44 on the insulation. Uh, older homes, you're probably only at an R20, you may be at an R30. Uh, but uh, even if you're at R38, which I think is current code, uh, Curtis, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, R R30, yes. Uh, but in any case, you've got to go to R44. So Bayren wants you to go above code in order to qualify for a uh, for a rebate from the Bayren program. All right. Next question. Um, would, would a window or portable AC with gas heating qualify? And that was the one I uh, referred to a little bit earlier. Oh. Uh, you've, got to, you've got to have built-in equipment. Um, you're re replacing a wall heater or a central AC or furnace system, uh, but portable units uh, stuck in windows or sitting over in the corner of the room uh, don't qualify. Great, and we have one question um, from Franz and it says, given CO3 backlog in permitting process, how much time is a start to finish on a simple project? Uh, Curtis, perhaps on that one? Well, if we're doing a whole house energy upgrade with insulation, um, say heating and cooling and potentially um, the electrical system, it could be anywhere from uh, two to three weeks. It just depends on the size of the home. There's a lot of variables there um, and it's depending on the scale of the project. Uh, as far as um, getting permits, getting everything in line and getting on the job, uh, usually we're about uh, a month out uh, for our projects and uh, we work to not do the project in steps um, and we look 
to stay on the project from start to finish and um, then uh, complete, uh, including all the test out and then um, process all the rebate paperwork. Um, that really uh, is also, again, depending on how much work needs to be done as far as time frame. But yeah, that, I'd say uh, a few weeks. Larry, what's been your experience recently? Uh, I think the question was, what's the turnaround time from start to finish? And that depends on the complexity of the project. And uh, most of our projects take three to five days. Um, it takes about a month to get something going as far as get it scheduled. Once you do a virtual assessment with me, it's it, if, if you were to authorize the project right away, you would probably be about 30 days out, maybe 45 days out. Just out of curiosity, how long did it take uh, to do everything that you did at Rebecca's house? Uh, we were at Rebecca's house for three and a half days. Not too bad. Wow. That's my, crew, my crew is a very well-oiled machine, and her attic was already taken care of. So dealing with the attic spaces and stuff like that adds days to the projects. And again, she had a small rectangular box house of 1,200 square feet. Those are my favorite kind. I, I'm sure Curtis would back me up on that. Um, <laughs> Smaller homes are very conducive to putting very small, quiet systems in. And um, usually the energy costs on these houses are end up being considerably less with the new system than they ever were before. Thank you. I see here there's a question about a whole house fan. And um, I, perhaps uh, could we unmute uh, Botep so that he could perhaps clarify that question a little bit? Yeah, uh, just okay. wanna. Yeah, go ahead, please. Thank you for. Uh, just want to understand what the whole house fan is. <laughs> uh, Curtis. Yeah, so a whole house fan is basically um, a fan between the attic area and the envelope or the inside of your home. Uh, when we are dealing with. Uh, Warm days, typically our attics get very warm and um, we can do two things with a, an attic fan. One, pull fresh, cooler air throughout uh, through the home, um, opening a window in an area that's maybe shaded um, with uh, lower temperatures than what we're finding inside the home. So we'll move that cool air through throughout the home and then we'll take that air in, up into the attic and then also evacuate the warm air that we're uh, seeing in, outside of our envelope one of the most important parts, though, to a um, whole house fan is that we don't create bad air quality with those fans. Um, in years past, uh, we we didn't suggest whole house fans because they were um, leaky. They didn't uh, create a very good seal from the attic to the envelope when they weren't being used. And uh, also it would, through penetrations, uh, create bad air quality in our home. But uh, now that we're going through the processes, of air sealing, uh, removing insulation, uh, getting new insulation in there, uh, and also the types of whole house fans that we use have a great seal um, between the attic and the envelope. Uh, it is a, a way to uh, kind of cool our homes without add, adding air conditioning. Thank you. Uh -huh. We still have a few more minutes this evening. Um, if there are further questions that uh, anybody would like to bring up. Can I add one point um, to the whole house fan thing? Sure. So it's, it's critically important. Whole house fans um, are sold at the hardware store, on Amazon, everywhere. And a lot of times they are installed by the homeowner or a handyman. It is incredibly important that adequate ventilation is, is installed into the attic space that is capable of carrying this massive amount of air that's put into your attic. That's what um, Curtis was talking about with the air coming back into the house. So it creates bad air quality by pressurizing the attic and sending dusty, nasty attic air back into the house. So if you're considering a whole house fan and the person that's offering it to you is not telling you you need more attic ventilation, you need to keep calling. <laughs> So thank you both. Continuing on, um, that, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm sorry, uh, Ellie, I'm probably cutting in here. Um, 
Is the next question the one having to do with the events? Um, yes, but I just want to say in Spanish that now's a good time to ask questions. Um, si ustedes tienen cualquier pregunta, ahora será el tiempo de, uh, de levantar su mano para decir, decirlo a nosotros, o la puedes poner en el chat um, como los demás. So this is the a, next question is about the event. Yeah, this is a, a compound question. I'll answer part of it and then I'll turn it over to Curtis. But uh, the question of how long does it take to get rebates? Um, and the question on that is uh, generally, as far as I know, it's been taking about uh, four to six weeks to get the checks after the paperwork has been submitted. Um, I think that was Rebecca's experience, uh, if I recall. Um, as to uh, payment, uh, you, the homeowner, are actually making your payment for the work that's been done on the terms that you set up with your contractor. And that can be uh, by whatever means that uh, is acceptable with the contractor, including, I'm sure, in some cases, credit cards or checks or what have you. Um, but that's separate from the rebate process, which is paperwork that's submitted to the county and then comes back in the form of a check to the individual homeowner. Uh, Curtis, uh, there's a question here. Uh, if you are upgrading to R44, or in fact, going to any higher rating on your um, insulation in the attic, uh, doesn't the installation then end up locking the eave vents? Uh, or how is that dealt with? Yeah, that's a great question. So a lot of the homes that we uh, are re-insulating, uh, we find that uh, the insulation before has been, even if it isn't up to R44, pushed in front of uh, the vents. So they're blocking the airflow or cross ventilation in the attic. Uh, when we get up to R44, uh, we're typically close to 14 inches right in there uh, if you're using the cellulose blown in. Um, and what we do to, to keep that insulation um, from blocking those air vents is we use a baffle or a barrier. Um, in some cases, we can um, build that out with a, a thin plywood. In others, um, there's, there's pre-made baffles. Uh, I do have a carpenter on staff that um, sets those uh, baffles in place or uh, the plywood in place to keep that insulation from blocking that area. Uh, from the outside, we check those vents um, to make sure that we haven't created any blockage because there is uh, quite a bit of um, insulation in that space once we blow in, um, but we can ensure that that doesn't uh, uh, change that airflow or cross ventilation through those baffles. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at the next question here. Um, if a homeowner already has a project in mind, uh, is the first step to find a Bayran contractor? Uh, and yes, I mean, in the same way that if you're getting ready to redo your bathroom or kitchen or getting your house painted, uh, you're gonna call a contractor and ask them to come out, evaluate it, give you a quote. Uh, and again, in general, especially if you're looking at bigger items, you may in fact wanna get a couple different quotes, uh, especially when you're looking at some of the equipment like the heating and air conditioning, uh, you'll find that the contractors may have different ideas as to what equipment to spec. Um, and that's what the energy advisor is there to help with is if you do have multiple quotes and the specs are slightly different between them, uh, the energy advisor has got the technical uh, knowledge to be able to help you sort through what would be the best choice. Anything that, uh, Larry, you'd want to add to that? No, I think you covered it all right there. You should do your due diligence and, and talk to a few different contractors. It makes sense. Um, from what I've heard from customers recently, you're going to get wildly varying um, options and uh, and ideas. So it just kind of depends on which path you want to choose. We'd be happy to come out, and there's no charge for the the estimate and uh, or virtual assessment. Uh Next question, how much is the rebate for replacing AC and heating? And um, uh, assuming that's central air that you're talking, uh, central uh, forced air system that you're talking about, you could get up to $2,000 if you go with the heat pump systems. Is that correct, uh, Larry? 
Yes, absolutely. You could get more than that depending on what the entire job entails. But the rebate for changing that and based on the efficiency of the heat pumps that we install, there's a, a nice kicker for that. So there's great rebates available if you have an existing air conditioning system. So you're telling me today that the rebates are even greater than the ones that I showed on the screen earlier this evening. Some of the rebates are coming down through the tech program. And okay. those are add-on rebates. They're called midstream rebates where they, they rebate directly to the contractor. And that's going on water heaters now. Um, they're looking at uh, releasing a heat pump one in uh, very soon. Uh, just to be clear, also, if you, you've got a furnace that's already using natural gas in your home, uh, if you replace that with another natural gas furnace, uh, it would have to be higher efficiency than the existing one. Uh, but the rebate that you would get for replacing gas with gas would be uh, appreciably less than it would be if you went with a heat pump, heat pump uh, system to, uh, to basically phase out the gas. Can I add to that, Doug? Um, sure. Right now, with the with the future of California's um, uh, air quality and our goal to re reduce carbon emissions by forty percent by twenty thirty, just having a furnace replaced with a furnace right now is not a great investment anymore. There's heat pump technology that can do the job for less operating cost and uh, make you have you a, a much more comfortable home. And uh, you won't be stuck with something in a number of years that is going to be already obsolete. It's important to understand that gas heating technology is 150 year old technology. All we've done over the years is just uh, made it a little faster and a little, and, a, and a little slicker looking, but it's extremely old technology. The heat pump stuff that we have today will completely change your environment in most houses. It's amazing and it's affordable. Thank you. Um, technically, we've reached the end of the evening, but um, if uh, nobody minds, uh, I'd like to uh, answer the remaining questions in the queue uh, before we sign off. Um, and again, to repeat, um, we will be sending out written answers uh, to the questions in a couple of weeks, along with other information uh, that was provided this evening. Uh, but if you'd like to stay on, we will continue to answer questions for the next 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, next question in the queue here, um, are estimates free? And uh, Curtis, I don't know uh, how you handle that. Yes, estimates are absolutely free. Uh, we, uh, we don't require that you do a whole house energy assessment to work with us. Uh, we do a visual inspection and in the beginning of COVID, we were doing visual, or we were doing, um, we were doing online visual inspections. But um, as people are getting more comfortable with uh, our team all being vaccinated, we've been coming out and doing um, a whole house um, visual inspection, and then giving suggestions uh, free of charge. Thank you, Larry. Is that also true with your work? Yes, absolutely. And like I said, we, we still do the virtual assessments. And the reason we do that is just because we're on this huge carbon reduction kick. And so driving the truck out to your house when we can kind of chat with you online um, and, and get some budget numbers, it, it, saves, it saves time for everybody. And time is one of our most valuable resources at this point. So the virtual assessment is no cost and the follow-up home assessment after the virtual is also no cost. Thank you. Question, do we pay taxes on the rebates? And the answer is no. I consider it a discount on the price of the work that you've had done. So uh, instead of paying, and just to pick a number, uh, $5,000 to get something done at your house, uh, you're gonna pay $4,000 for it. And uh, the difference is not seen as income. Um, okay, we do not have an attic or a basement. Can we still qualify for the mini AC split rebates? Larry? 
Um, if you have an existing gas heating source, like a floor furnace or a wall furnace, you don't have a crawl space, so you wouldn't have a floor furnace. But if you have a wall furnace, a non-forced air heating system that's gas, uh, you can qualify for going to a wall-mounted solution. So, uh, but it is limited. You can't go with a ducted solution unless you have a ducted solution now. Um, Curtis, do you use batting instead of blowing in insulation? In some cases we do. In some cases we, we do. Uh, yeah, uh, mute your, uh, yeah, mute that one, use the secondary one. There you go. How, how's that, is that better? That's good, that's good. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, so in ca some cases we do, um, to reach that R44 um, value, we typically go with an R30 um, bat and then go back over with an R15. So we're a little bit above that. Um, there is a little bit more uh, labor involved. Uh, I do suggest that cellulose um, or blown in loose fill material be used, but uh, there are some cases where customers uh, are looking to do different improvements down the road and don't wanna remove um, or, or deal with the loose fill insulation. So uh, we would use the bat material to, to um, set them up for the future. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure, the question here is, uh, is there a rebate for a whole house fan? And I don't believe there is. Uh, anybody know different? No, and I, I would, I'd like to add that, um, you know, the, the whole house fans are, uh, a small solution, but really there, you really kind of need to look at uh, the big picture. Um, so uh, I think that some of our um, questions on that, um, they're really use case um, oriented. Not every home can just be fixed with a whole house fan. And, um, and that's why the rebate program really picks out improvements um, that make leaps and bounds for energy efficiency because um, that's the goal here, right? To, to create the, the best um, improvements of efficiency. Thank you. Uh, next question, how to get started. Uh, I would go to bayranresidential.org and go to the tab that says find a contractor. And that's a search function that allows you to uh, search geographically so that if you are out uh, just to pick a town in Concord, you probably may not want to uh, call up a contractor who's based in uh, say uh, Santa Rosa or Santa Clara or something like that. So you can select contractors based on where they are relative to where you are. The specialty, uh, an insulation contractor uh, might be different than if you've got a plumbing issue where you're replacing the water heater. Um, and you can also, again, search on language. So you can find somebody who's uh, proficient in Spanish, or I know that there's several other languages besides English in there as well. And uh, just call them in the same way that you would, again, if you were uh, getting your bathroom re redone. And uh, of course, a lot of this is personal choice, personal preference. How do you feel about the person that you're going to be working with? And you can make your selections based on price and on uh, comfort, uh, whatever else. But that's your starting point. BayRenResidential.org. Find a contractor. If you've got further questions, uh, you also please give me a call. We have a Q&A question. Okay. Um, is the water heater qualified for the rebate? Water heaters qualify if you replace gas with gas, it's $300. Was that uh, the number I saw? But if you replace a gas water heater with a uh, heat pump unit, it's $1,000 or is it 800? I'm sorry, it's, it's more if you go with heat pump technology. Do we have any final questions? Okay, uh, could we have the last slide then in the presentation?
So just to wrap up uh, again, um, the main site for getting information on the Bayren program is bayrenresidential.org. You can find contractors there. You can um, also find a list of measures. I, I must say it's buried a little bit under one of the tabs, but it's under homeowner resources. Uh, and uh, it's a two page PDF uh, that sets out uh, what was on the slides this evening. Um, and it details the specifications and various other things. Of course, you can also call the, uh, uh, or email the energy advisor uh, and they can help you work through the technical issues of what you have in, uh, have in mind. Uh, also, in terms of other resources, uh, you can contact me, uh, especially contact Ellie if uh, uh, you're more comfortable uh, conversing in Spanish. Uh, Damian Hardman, who is not here this evening, is the representative for the program with the County of Contra Costa. And so uh, uh, he uh, wasn't available this evening, but he's also another resource that you can call to get further information on the program. And as Ellie has uh, sent everything out this evening, uh, we do have a survey on the site. Uh, we would ask uh, if you can take a couple minutes to fill that out. Uh, it helps us improve the program for the next workshop. And if you are interested, the next workshop is going to be held on the afternoon of November 9th. It will also be a virtual workshop. And with that, um, uh, you know, uh, refer your friends to it. We will be sending out a package of information that will include a link uh, to a YouTube channel uh, where this workshop is going to be available for anybody to view. Uh, previous workshops, there's been about five or six of them over the COVID period, uh, can be found there as well. So in addition, uh, it turns out if you happen to be uh, browsing through Bayron, uh, you'll find that other counties, Santa Clara, uh, San Mateo, and so on, all have their own workshops. Uh, the same information is being uh, shared in each one of them. If you find one that fits your schedule, by all means, uh, sign up for it. So with that, I would like to thank everybody for taking the time away from their evening. Uh, we appreciate your attention. Uh, we appreciate the questions. Thank you to Larry. Thank you to Curtis. Couldn't, and thank you especially to Ellie for everything that you did tonight to make this happen. And uh, with that, I'd like to sign off. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you for your patience and kind words. Oh, it looks like we have one hand that's raised. Another question? Go ahead, Liam. Ah, uh, Liam? Uh, muted, there we are, okay. I, I'm sorry, I was gonna ask, um, is, is your program deal with the water saving or only for electricity? If you replace the water heater, is that unit gonna save water also? Because water is getting very expensive. Uh, let me take the opening on that. And then uh, Larry, if you're still with us, I'd like to have you follow up. But uh, the simple um, answer is that we are not offering rebates for saving water per se. Now, uh, generally your water purveyor, uh, whether it's East Bay Mud or whether it's uh, Contra Costa Water or somebody else, uh, most of them do have programs where they are offering rebates, for example, for taking out uh, lawns and replacing it with less water intensive um, landscaping. Uh, but uh, we don't have anything on our list of measures uh, that applies directly to saving saving water itself. Now, as to whether or not a new water heater will save you water, uh, Larry, what do you think? Well, it might save you water if your old one is uh, not working well, but um, its consumption of water is based on your usage. So the only way a water heater is gonna save you actual gallons of water is if you can get the hot water to the tap quicker. And so, or, the, or if the hot water is ready at the tap when you need it. And there's a lot of different solutions for that, inc including circulator pumps and all of those, but a traditional circulator pump is gonna use a lot of energy keeping the pipes hot all the time. What we recommend to our customers to save water 
is to put in a instantaneous uh, circulator pump in the furthest loop. And then there's a button you push when you want to use the hot water, you push the button and you wait about a minute and a half and you have hot water at all the faucets and you don't waste a drop of water. That's a great solution, but the water heaters themselves won't save water. It's going to be how we can set them up and, um, and if you can get that hot water to your tap quicker. Thank you. Further questions from anyone? Okay, well, I think now we can sign off and say good evening. Everybody enjoy the rest of the evening. It looks like a beautiful night out there. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you.